Yes. Every, I try to put everything in Blackboard so you have access to everything I'm doing. And one way to study is to, I hate to print stuff off, but at least look at it before you come to class. But that's just a thought. I just thought I would share that and take a drink of coffee. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> mmm, num, 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 num. Okay, today we move on to Module 2. Happy Module 2, people! <laughs> okay. Right, well, that one over there did it. What we're going to talk about is how difficult it can be to change words into math because they really have different ideas. I mean, they, they really come from different sides of the brain. You know, a writer kind of lives on the right side of the brain that affects the left side of the body. They're more abstract. Um, they carry connotations and denotations and all that stuff that words do. Um, and then there's math. And math just is what it is. And we're going to talk about the word is. Okay, so one of the more difficult things in math that unfortunately you have to do in real life is translate word problems into math problems. Okay, so that's the fun that we get to have this week. Woo! Okay, I am glad to see the enthusiasm. The sheet, if you do not have a sheet, please come up and get one. comes up, you can't pay attention to anything. But the panda, I can't. <laughs> there we are. All right, so what we're going to do today is translate. You know, it's just like math is a foreign language. And so if you can just come to terms with that, that you're in a foreign language class, um, and somebody says, oh, you're taking a foreign language, what foreign language? And you say, nah, and they go, huh? But it really is. We have our own language, we have our own version of commas, and you'll get to meet some of those. But right now, that first line is probably very, very obvious to you, that, uh, and you remember it, that some means to add, the word some. Now we know that. So the sum of blank and blank, I think, is what you see on this sheet first down here. The sum of blank and blank means that you're going to add them together. The sum of 3 and 4 is 7. The sum of 5 and 8 is 13. Had to think about that one. That's where the obviousness and the easiness stops, okay? Because I've never thought that the word difference automatically means subtraction, and it does in math, okay? So the different, difference means subtract, and of course less would mean subtract, and you know what that means. But um, the word difference, the, and, and order of numbers matters, 
For instance, if you take the difference, really wanted a black one. The difference get from living with dogs is that you growl when you get irritated. <laughs> I have to remember, human beings might not like that. The difference of three and four means you're going to subtract. But order matters when you've got the difference of three and four. Um, what this is, is because 3 comes first and 4 comes second, you're going to have 3 minus 4, and that equals negative 1. The difference of 3 and 4 is 3 minus 4. Not as comfortable as the difference of 4 and 3, which would be 4 minus 3. Okay, and the word product means multiply. I don't think that's obvious at all. The product of 3 and 4 Well, because with multiplication, order doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter whether you say 3 times 4 or 4 times 3. It's going to be 12. But order does matter when you're dividing. Quotient means to divide. Quotient. It's not a verb. You know, the quotient is what you get after you divide. But so order matters with quotient. It doesn't matter with product. It does matter with difference. So let's just erase product. One of the reasons that adding and multiplying can be easier is that order just doesn't matter. You know, 3 times 4 and 4 times 3 are the same thing. 3 plus 4, 4 plus 3, they're the same thing. But that's not true with uh, subtraction and dividing. So here the order is going to matter. Again, the quotient of 3 and 4 is 3 fourths. 3 divided by 4. Most of the time in math, we show division with a fraction. We don't use the actual division sign. We just show it like that. Because we're lazy is the real truth. I really think that is the real truth. OK. All right. now. On the other hand, you probably already know this, 4 divided by 3 means 4 divided by 3. But you're still going in the same order. So divide is pretty obviously divide, and the order, you're still given the order. So I don't think that that really is super hard. But what I'm about to show you is super hard and tricky and it can mess just about anybody up, unless you stop to think. But sometimes if you're busy running through all the homework problems, it's really hard to stop and think. subtracted from, the numbers get switched around. Because 3 is going to be subtracted from 4. If you had 4 apples and uh, you're subtracting 3 apples from 4 apples, that's really 4 minus 3 is 1. 
So you have to be careful of words like from. Sometimes they can do strange things to math problems that you don't expect. Okay, now, is, for those of you who are old enough to remember, you recall that Bill Clinton, when he was president, had a lot of trouble with the word is. In fact, there's that famous news clip of him saying, well, it all depends on how you define is. But in math, we don't have a problem with is, OK? In math, the word is pretty much has one meaning. Is means equals. If you say something over here, like, like there. 3 subtracted from 4 is 1. That means equals 1. Is means equals. It leaves very little room for debate. Is means equals, period. Is, is, equals. Then. There's a pesky little word that, that I think it really likes to mess people up. It's a little bitty word. Like, like is is a little bitty word, so is the word of. The word of down there at the very bottom of your sheet. Of means different things in different contexts. Kind of like real life, where a word can mean something in this case, but it has a different meaning in another case. The word of. When you're dealing with percent, and we're going to review percent a little bit too. When you're, I've got to have another cracker coffee. It's that coffee time of the afternoon. You know, it's just. <laughs> Woo, yeah, all right. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you about that. <laughs> of, of, when you're dealing with percents. When you're dealing with percents of, <clears throat> the word of means multiply. So that if you're saying 25% of 4,328, I have no idea what the answer is, incidentally. If you're saying 25, excuse me, 25% of 4,328, what you're going to multiply on your trusty calculator or by hand is going to be 0.25, never the 25. 0.25 times 4, 3, 2, 8. You throw that in your calculator and you get an answer. And I don't really care what it is. It's the whole idea of what of is. So we have to talk about translating percent. There's a way to not have to memorize it. And I'm going to share that with you. Or you can just memorize it to change a percent to a decimal, you move the decimal point two places to the right. Left. That hand. Left. OK, there's an understood decimal point there. You move it one, two places to the left to change it to a decimal. But there's a way to not have to memorize that. And you would think your calculator would just do it for you automatically, the TI. It's so expensive. But it doesn't, so give up on that one. Maybe the Inspire would, but 
none of the others. Let's talk about what 25% really means. In, in uh, most people make their percent signs like that. And how that sign came to be the percent sign is because of laziness and being in a hurry. All right, that's not really the way it was originally. That's the way it was originally. And I know that, that you've seen it that way too. What 25% originally meant was 25, and then this slash is a sideways division line. 25 divided by, and the two zeros are the zeros in 100. And that's what 25% means, really. And that's the way you can change the percent 25, 25% to a decimal. If you can't remember which way to move the decimal point, if you can just remember that these two zeros mean 100 and this means divide, that's a much better one than that. But, and that means divide, then what you're really saying is 25 divided by 100. Put that in your calculator, and it will tell you, well, that's 0.25. And if you math frac that, you'll find out it's 1 fourth. OK? So I'm not going to make you do problems without your calculator. I want you to get really good at using your, your TI calculator. Whether it's an 82, 83, or 84, I want you to be very versatile with it. Learn all the tricks. It can really help you. And from now on in math, most of your professors want you to use it. You have died and gone to heaven. <laughs> Okay, so there's a lot you don't need to memorize now, a lot of little mechanics that you just don't need to memorize. Um, and basically, the best way to not have to memorize, I mean, sometimes you just have to, but the best way to not have to is when possible, if you can understand why something is the way it is, then you, then you understand it. You don't have to just memorize it. Or you can always just memorize it. Okay. Now, if you turn over your piece of paper, you're going to see two problems. I suppose we shouldn't call them problems. You know, it's not politically correct to call a problem a problem anymore. We don't have problems anymore. We have challenges. <laughs> I love political speak. All right, well, let's, let's look at our challenge. <laughs> monster. Get down there. All right. Thank goodness you've got your version of it. Um, that one. The product of 3 and a number increased by 8 is negative 48. Now that might or might not be easy to you. I don't think it's just easy. If you were going to say, well, the product of 3 and 8, the product of 3 and 8 is 24. No problem there. But it's a lot more complicated than that. Notice, now I went into math. That means I didn't want to have to remember where you put commas. But notice how that phrase is set off in commas and a, a number. Increased. Ooh. Yeah, you must be creative in math at all times. 
um, and a number increased by eight, comma. That thing is one thing. That's the whole reason it's set off by commas. It's almost like, you see, in my language, which is math, we don't use commas. We use parentheses. We would set that off in parentheses. But here, because it's English, they set it off in commas, OK? So the product, that means you're going to multiply, of three, OK, number three, the product, you're going to multiply three by something. Remember, we use a dot to mean multiply, a raised dot to mean multiply a lot of the time. And a number, what number? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. So we call it a letter. Any letter you like. Anybody have a favorite letter? C. C. Yes, but do you have a favorite? No. OK. The product of three and a number, we don't know what it is, so we call it C. A number increased by eight. Well, increase is the same in math and in English. Increase means get bigger. Increase means add. So this is a number increased by eight. And we're multiplying it by three. Now, what could is be? Equals. Equals. There you go. It's so simple. Is negative 48. OK. So now you're ready. You've done it. But it's taking the words and trying to figure out what they mean. Sometimes you have to read them three, four, five times. The product of three, now, if, if you didn't take the comma into account, it would look like the product of three and a number. Well, that would be 3C or 3X. But it's not. Notice that after a number, it keeps going on. Increased by eight. What's increased by eight? Well, it must have been the letter, the number we don't know, increased by eight. So remember that parentheses group things together. And so this is going to be one number that's multiplied by 3. And when you multiply these two things together, you're going to get negative 48. Now you're ready to solve the equation. And notice that this is the kind of problem that you solved in Module 1. This is what Module 1 homework was all about. Now you've got to translate words into what you did in Module 1. So your old hands at that. You can get that piece of cake. Come on, let's all do it together here. Okay. Now what do I do? Yeah, subtract 24. Why? Yeah, get rid of it. That's tricky. That zeroes out. This is actually negative 72. OK, because when you. We're really adding negative 48 plus negative 24. When you add two negative numbers, you get a bigger negative number. So here I am with 3C equals negative 72. And now what do I do? Divide by 3. Divide by 3. And that gives me, what, negative 24. Cool. Cool beans. Okay, I'm going to kill myself on that thing. No, I don't want that. OK. Yes. Now, do you feel a sense of accomplishment? And is it true, though? Let's see if it's true. Because just because it looks good doesn't mean it's true.
Okay, so I've got three times this number I don't know, which is negative 24, but it's increased by 8. What is negative 24 plus 8? Negative 16. Negative 16. So 3 times negative 16, does that equal negative 48? Yes, it does. Prove it. All right. Negative 16 times 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, and 1 is 4. But positive 3 times a negative number is going to be negative, so it'll be negative 48. That's if you're on a desert island without your calculator. Don't let that happen. And make sure you bring batteries with you, waterproof. Okay, let's do the next one. This one doesn't have convenient commas. Oh, were there questions about this, about what we did in this? Anybody want to just pipe up and say something? Doesn't even have to be intelligent. Come on. Yeah. Wouldn't an easier way to be or to do that to be just like negative forty eight divided by three? You could do that. that. Absolutely. And then you wouldn't have to go through all that math. That's true. That's true. But they want to learn it this way. That's what I did originally, and then he went on the long spiel, and then I was like, oh, it's not negative 60, I'm retarded. And then you not back allowed to, to say 60. that. So, so why take the scenic route? You know what I mean? Because All right. when you plug in the number in the calculator, because it gives I, you minus 16, but then yeah. minus 16 is not the answer. I know, the I answer saw is, that. So you could easily mistake that for the answer and be wrong if you plug into that Oh, Okay. I, I tend to not do it that way, which is a good way. I tend to not do it that way because people can get all messed up. However, as long as there are enough people talking about it, here's our setup. Now, you meet problems like this when you do rate times distance problems, which you're not going to do a whole lot of this semester, but you sure will in intermediate algebra if you take intermediate algebra. Sometimes when you're really, really lucky, like really lucky, this number will actually go evenly into this number. It doesn't always happen, okay? Like if that was a 5, 5 doesn't go evenly into negative 48, or positive 48 for that matter. It just doesn't. But 3 does. So you can actually divide both sides by 3 before you work on that. So you take that out of the picture. You don't have to distribute. What you're left with is C plus 8 equals, and you get out your trusty calculator, and you find this is negative 16. And then you just solve that. Is that what you meant? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that's against PEMDAS anyway, so. Well, but you're going to do it anyway, sometimes. PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. She's so embarrassing. <laughs> now remember, when you've got something like this where you've got a negative minus a number, please put it in your calculator because it's so easy to get it wrong. So easy to get it wrong, this just begs for a calculator. Negative 24. Okay, so actually it's not against PEMDAS though, because if you had 3 times negative 16 equals negative 48, since it's an equation, you could divide both sides by the same number. Remember, you can do anything to the left, you can do to the right. Anything to the right, you do to the left. It, all that's important is that you do exactly the same thing to both sides of the equation. Okay? So you could do that, and if the threes are knocked out, look what you're left with. 
negative 16 over here, which equals, I wonder what it could equal. It does equal negative 16. So it would work. You could do it. You can do amazing things as long as you've got an equation and you're doing the same thing to both sides. That's wonderful. It's not even cheating. Okay, now where was I? That was, that was wonderful, thank you. There is always more way to work, there are always more ways to work a problem than just one, almost always. Never say always about anything. Okay, one of the learning outcomes given to us by the state of Arkansas is that you should be encouraged to solve problems in different ways. So that's very good. Now there's this one. Four. Now you see, if only they provided parentheses or, or commas or something. Four plus, it looks for all the world like four plus five is nine, but it's not. Because you have to read the whole problem. So let's read the whole problem through. Four plus five times the number is seven times the number. What is the number? Well, forget the question. Four plus five times the number is. So sometimes, if you're not at all sure how to handle a problem, look for is. Because you know what is is, right? Is is equals. And then you can divide the problem into what's on the left of is and what's on the right of is. And sometimes that can make life easier. When all else fails, is is equals. All right, so I'm going to just look over at the left. The left side of is is 4 plus 5 times a number. And then I'll just move the equal sign, because I can, is. And I'm not even going to think about what's over there right now. I've got 4 plus 5, and then they come up with times the number. So it can't be 4 plus 5 is 9. It can't be. There's more involved here. 4 plus something, and it's going to end up being 4 plus 5 times the number where a number is a number, you don't know, otherwise they just say what the number is. So when you see a number, you want to think a letter. It doesn't matter what letter, but let's just use n this time. So 4 plus 5 times a number, well that's 4 plus 5 times a number, is. So we've taken care of the left side. But you can play with it more to see what, what looks the most correct. And then you get to the other side. Seven times the number. Not too hard. Seven times the number. The number. Excuse me. The number. Luckily, it ends up that the number is the same number as a number. So hey, we're home free. Whatever letter you used for a number, you're going to use for the number. And so there you go, and it wasn't all that bad. Maybe it was. But you see, the hardest part is over now. Now it's just algebra. But trying to figure out how the letters can be expressed as an equation, uh, the numbers, the words, there you go, the words. Trying to figure out how, well, all of those letters, you know, they go together into words, and you've got to figure out what the words are, and then you've got to figure out where they go in the equation. It is not an easy process. But the more you do it, the more you kind of see a rhythm going. 
All right, I'm going to get my like terms together. This is on this side of the equal sign. This is on this side of the equal sign. I'm only allowed to add or subtract to get terms from one side of the equal sign to the other. So since this is positive 5n, how can I turn it into a 0? I have to subtract 5n. So I'm going to say minus 5n and minus 5n. And they zero out here, so I'm left with a 4 over here. And then, OK, I've got 7 ins, and I take away 5 of them. There are 2 ins left. And now I've got to figure out, OK, I don't care what 2 n is. I need n all by itself. 2 is multiplied by n. I have to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. And so 2 over 2 cancels. I'm left with an n. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And so n is 2. Yes? Did you have your hand up? No. Okay, you've mastered algebra, right? Is that it? Yeah, that's all there is to algebra. Okay. Semester's <laughs> over. <laughs> um, no, it's not. I lied. Okay, real quick. You can, uh, yes, sir. you can do the 7 end to the left with the 5 end to the right, and it comes out to be the same thing, right? Yes. Because 4 over 2 would be 2, and but let's, let's prove it. Okay. For the doubters. It's another step. If I subtract 7 in from both sides, like that's a 7, then I'll have 4 plus negative 2 in, or 4 minus 2 in, equals 7 ins, and I take away 7 ins. I've got zero little ins running around right now. And then I need to move the number term over to the other side, so I subtract 4 and I subtract 4. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So you bring down the negative. Remember to always, a number always takes the sign in front of it. So negative 2 in. And so that's what you've got right now. You've got negative 2 in equals negative 4. And then it's negative 2 times n. So to undo multiplication, you have to divide. Negative 2 divided by negative 2. The negative 2's cancel out, leaving you with an n. Negative 4 divided by negative 2. You can put it in the calculator, or you can say to yourself, well, I know that negative divided by negative is positive. So 4 divided by these cancel. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And so you get the same answer. And you see, it, does, it just doesn't matter. And the more you do it, the more you, you can kind of look ahead into the future and say, well, if I do that, then, but if I do this, then I'll cut down on the steps. And so that's, uh, but that just comes with doing a whole bunch of them. But notice that it doesn't matter which side your letters end up on. If you're doing all the steps correctly, you get the right answer, which is kind of neat. It doesn't depend on which side. I think it's neat. Hey, you know, like, there's some of us who don't have lives, and this is how we enjoy ourselves. Just, just be nice. Okay, while I'm erasing the board, I have a job for all of you. It's hard work, okay? I want you, I mean, there are four rows, but what I would really like is for you to put yourself into five groups. Yeah, so y'all decide what group you want to be in. That means you have to meet each other and talk and stuff. Ew. <coughs> Thank you.
How many people are there? Yeah, One, two, three, four, five, four six, seven, four, eight, four, nine, ten, eight. eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. That would be four people and two groups will have five people, right? We can manage this, right? Yeah! Come on. coffee, you don't have any drugs to help you. <laughs> Number one. All right. Wonderful ones. Number one. Wonderful ones. Wonderful ones. Wait a minute. There are an awful lot of wonderful ones. Who are the terrific twos? <laughs> Woo! Come on, terrific twos. Right here. The All right. Ones. Right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I see. Uh, I need a group three. Come on. Come on. Group three. I have just dedicated you. Would you like to be in a group or would you like to? Y'all going to stay there or come up to the board? What do you want? I can come to the board. All right. Do it. I think you should be in group three. Okay. <laughs> and you don't have a group? No, she's making it. No, yeah, you do. Well, you know, life's hard, right? And it's, it's not fair, life's hard. So, why don't you need group four? Group four, I need group five to donate a person. All right, all right. <laughs> Can't wait to get away from them, right? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. All right. Now I'm going to work backwards here because I, I tend to be that way. Math people tend to be backwards. Okay, group two. There you go. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Everybody gets one. Group three. Here, you're the boss. I don't think I signed my paper. Now that I saw that. Okay. Everybody. Did I sign my paper? See, I did it. I'll take care of that. <laughs> you're all the same. Uh, five, 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 awesome. Five, I thought they were different. Five of us. Why are they? They're all the same color. Why are they? I guess it's so one of us could have it. I don't know. Just to make sure. They're the same. They ought to be the same. Oh, okay. Oh, five. Translate. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Here you go, group five. We can't. This is like a first. Okay. So, what are yeah. Consult with each other. Just tell me what's up. Two in a parenthesis. Two parenthesis. You tell them how to do it. I choose not to do that. Ladies, make room. Plus seven. I'm the one with the original picture. I can't take close to my list. What are you going to say? Right. Here you go. I can feel the heat of the brain injury. Brain injury. 
Brain energy. Brain energy. Oh my God. Phineas Cage. Phineas Cage. He's the first person in history to study the brain injury has changed his emotional state. Psychologist. The poor is messing me all up. I'm just thinking about the poor man. Yeah, I did. I have a sister. Psychologist. It's like, yeah, psychologist. It's my sister. It's my sister. It's my sister. I remember. Yes. yes. All right. We don't all have to do that, do we? We probably did it wrong. We don't have to do that. It would hurt. All right. Let's see. Let me read, let me read. Translate, the product of two and a number increased by seven equals negative 36. So you've got two X plus, plus 14 equals negative 36. You subtracted 14 and, and that gives you negative 50. And you divide it by two, we negative, to, excellent, excellent, excellent. Don't leave, stay right there. Just take a look here. Okay. This is one that I Yeah. Well, let's see. No, it's not. No. This Three. is a totally fresh one. Three and a number increased by eight right. is negative 48. This is so brilliant. I have rarely in my life Three x plus twenty four. Add them together very carefully. We've got negative thirty two, and then the only way to get that three away from that x is to multiply it. Takes as long as you would take. It's not really time. It is exactly like my math lab. Is this next one you have? Like you already signed it? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Messing with my stuff. All right. <laughs> yeah, it, but I, it, it took me 35 because I just cruised by it because yeah. it's not for a grade. It's not really, doesn't really matter, you know what I mean, it, for this class, so. I could have done better, but I, I did better than 70, that's for sure. Which is what would have request to pass the class, but it's not great. It's okay. Uh, the product of oh, well, I had to take and a placement test. <laughs> 20 years since I took a math class, so I had to take a placement test. Me, uh, 299, yeah, 15 years. 15 years since I got out of high school, so. The product of two. The product of two. Yeah, I mean, don't work ever without your budget. I see this, I see people younger than me just cruising through the class, and I'm like, <laughs> such a struggle, such a struggle. And it pisses me out on this that I need this class that I can take my math for yeah, AES. Yeah. But I'm scheduled to graduate next May, so I have one semester after this. So I'm counting that I am going to pass this and that I am going to pass the next one. It's going to happen. I'm just visualizing. That's what they say, right? Visualize and make it happen. I have to. I <laughs> Question. Man, I seem like I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Do I, <laughs> I seem like I've been here center? for so long. All right. Do I have to go to the test center for this? Because I did this yesterday. I followed the instructions. Did it on my computer online. No, yeah. This is only for the testing center. This is just. You have okay. to set up. You have to set this up. This is not even. Test. It's not for you. This is not graded. This is nothing. You're going to take a pre algebra and a beginning algebra test. I did that, though. I did the test online. It's going to give you a score. It's going to stay in the system. At the end of the course, they're going to ask you to take it all over again. It's just pretty much to see where you were and where you're at. It's going to grade her as a teacher. It's not really for us. It's just for for them to see how much you learned from her during the semester. So even though I took it, i got to go up there and take it again. You couldn't possibly have taken this at home because... I did. I, did, I mean, I, I did all of this. B8, 122, 38. Are you serious? I got no, a 75 on the pre algebra and a 40 on the beginning. Oh. <laughs> and... I guess you do have to... Because once I saw... The t I thought that was my signature and I saw the testing center. Yeah. Whoa. Um, you gotta take it again. I'm sorry. And at negative 12, it's a negative 36. 
Okay. Y'all are, are brilliant. All right, the next one is Saul. Three. Oh, three is still working. Four. Four. And then. And don't look at the notes that the last class wrote. <laughs> Nothing like telling people not to look at things. This is the one we just finished. Solve. Solve. Group two. Solve. Six X equals nine X. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 oh, dear. 9x. Oh, 9x? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nine times the number. I wasn't even looking. Oh. It should be positive, though, right? Positive. So, huh? Click in time trade. Because if you click in time trade, it's going to ask you to set up an appointment. And I have a meeting like 15 minutes after this class ends at my work that I have to be at. And I don't think they're going to be open after I'm done with the meeting. They're open until 8. 8? Yeah. But you can't start a test after 6 30. Okay. We're done. We're done. Let me see your problem. Oh. 12 plus 6 times the number is 9 times the number. The hardest part, setting up the first line. Minus 6x, minus 6x, 3x, blah, 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 blah. Very good. Very good. You can erase your work and your reward is to be able to sit down. Thank you. Quick question. I hope it's not another fireplace. Right. Just in there, I to I'm going to go home. 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 And then you divide it. I just entered that stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so we're going back to text. It's the Greek scenario. Okay, if you're not, I'll give it to you. We'll go to Walmart. Not the way it's supposed to work. You can do these tests at Oh, I waste your test to see and it tells me your test date and everything. It's kind of unusual. Oh, the pre test? I didn't know that. I thought you were talking about the test test. Oh, I didn't know. Thanks. No, I'm just kidding. Well, why are you doing I'm taking this day anyway. Well, the exact same thing as going in there. Right. Okay, yeah. I'm not trying to surveil it. Yeah, I got seven. Uh, All right, that's right. Yes, seven. Oh, very good. Brilliant. Brilliant. Go ahead and erase your 
board and you get to sit down. Yay! Here we go. Thank you. I'll take one more check. i got to be at a meeting in like 30 minutes. A bit of work meeting. Then go. Well, no, no, I'm just, I just want to double check. Double check what? If I need to go, if I need to set up. Oh, yeah, go ask us. Or, no, don't ask him. Just, I'll check it. That's what I'm saying. Do, do you need to check it right now, or do I just not worry about it? Can I take it with me and check it, and then let you know if it works? Yeah, I just don't want to get past tonight and then get screwed over for whatever. I'm not doing financial anyway, but. Okay, September 4th is the cutoff date. Oh, for that test? Oh, I thought it was today. No. Okay. September 4th. Then on Wednesday, I guess I'll, I'll check. Yeah. yeah, it's not a big issue. Cool. All right, y'all. All right, 4 plus 7 times a number is 9 times the number. And you solved it. And you got 2 and equals 4 n equals 2. Where have I seen this? Yeah. Very good. Very good. For them to just Oh, yes. Your number three. This is eight plus like this next time. This is uh, one of the bigger problems, challenges. No. And something I've noticed with real story problems, at least for me, if I can separate them into separate sentences, you know, like rewrite them in, in separate sentences, it can, it can make more sense than just seeing all those words jumbled together. But that could just be me. All right, so you've got the US Senate. And there are 100 members. And it says, after a particular election, there weren't any independents, there weren't any Greens, there weren't any Libertarians, there, there were just Democrats and Republicans. So, the next sentence says that after this particular election, there were eight more Democrats
than Republicans. How many Republicans were there? Thank you. That's true. That's true. But suppose you didn't know. The rest of it says how many, uh, how many Democrats and Republicans were there. Sounds like a joke, doesn't it? Um, so, I mean, let's just take it from the beginning. If you can't just look at it and go, boo, 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 boo. okay? All right. There are Dems and Reps. Which party has the most in this particular Congress? Democrats. The Democrats. Democrats. Well, we don't know how many of each there are, except some of us know. And, but we do know that these guys are going to add up to 100. Sometimes, if you're stumped on a problem, it's really good to write it out in words. Now, there are eight more Democrats, so which party is bigger? Democrats. The Democrats. There are eight more Democrats than Republicans, so you know that however many Republicans there are, if you just add eight to them, you'll get the Democrats. How many Republicans are there? Don't say. All right, let's say we don't know. I love I don't know. So we can call them by any letter you want. How about R? I like our personal reasons. Rademacher, personal reasons. Yeah. If we call the Republicans, say that there are our Republicans in that particular Congress, we still don't know how many there are, but at least we represented them. And now all we have to do is add them to the Democrats, and we also don't know how many Democrats there are, but we do know that there are eight more Democrats than Republicans, so however many Republicans there are, if you add eight to them, you get the Democrats. And together, they add up to 100. And from there, it's just algebra. From there, you're adding like terms, you've got to get 2R, 8 plus 2R, and then you're going to blah, 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 like you just did up at the board. The hard part was coming up with this. Is that understandable? Shouldn't that first one be R, should the Democrats be listed there? Um, yeah. The Democrats, yes, definitely. But the Democrats are eight more than the Republicans. Okay. So that's why I did it that way. There are other ways to work it. And you could try working it other ways. Like there's a way to, I don't want to go into it. You play with it. You work with it. The more ways you work with a problem, the better you get at algebra. I'm sure somebody could find some way to divide something. Anyway, so this is the kind of wordy word problem we're going to do next time, okay? And um, if, you, if you look at the notes in Blackboard, you'll see what we're going to do next time, and, and, or if you like do the homework, or both, you'll, you'll see what we need to do. And um, I... Yes, I could let you go a little early. Don't tell anybody. is right down the hall if anyone wants to come talk to me about math or the meaning of life, whatever. Oh, I'm having like, a lot of issues with my math class. And I was wondering if you could help me. Yes. I'm getting really behind. Yes, yes. Uh, 
why don't we go over to the math center and work on it? For my oh, you have it. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Go ahead and get started. I was just going to ask if you had any more of those green things. No, but if you go into Blackboard, into our, our class on Blackboard, over on the menu, you'll see Arkansas Pretest. And if you go in there, you can print off okay. the one for your class. It won't be green. It'll just be on white paper when you print it off. But when do you need to take this by? Um, the absolute cutoff date is September 4th. Oh, okay. So you've just got time. All right. Yeah. Can I show you the way that I solve it? Can you tell sure. me if it works in every instance? So you would divide that by two? You know what? And then that would be 50, would be half. So if you had half and half, it'd be 50 Democrats, 50 Republicans. And then, you know, you have eight more, so eight divided by two is four. You add two, or you add four to the Democrats and then take away four from the other. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. That would work here, but there will be times that it doesn't work. So be careful. That's how I can't do math. If I, Yo, don't say you can't do math. I can't write it out. I have to do it in my head. Yeah. That oh, that's good. Did. That is great. And that's, that's a talent I don't have. Huh? See you yeah, yeah, bye. That I wish I, I did to, have. I have to look at it and that's how I see it. Because I was like, okay, well, because originally when I first saw it, I was like, it was on another question, but it was similar. And I added. Eight to the party, and I took away eight. But then that was, there's a 16 difference. So kind of trial and error, by all means, you know, to to whatever extent. Let me stop this.